Hi guys, I'm Enzo Payonga. I'm from the Philippines and I, recent, I recently completed the MIT Innovation and Entrepreneurship Bootcamp in Brisbane last February. And I'm here to share with you my experience in crowdfunding my way to the MIT Bootcamp. Hope you learn um, from, this, uh, from this recording. Hi, I'm Ben Ortega. And uh, I'm also a graduate from the class five group from Brisbane and uh, I'm currently the director of business development uh, at a local startup here out in the Boston area. And I'm here with Enzo and Andrew to talk about what I did in order to crowdfund my entrance to the program and, uh, and some tips that you should uh, be thinking about as you um, start to do that yourself. I'm going to start with, um, with presenting to you how it all began. And along the way, Ben will also um, give his comments and um, additional insights for this, as he also went through the, a similar process when he went to the bootcamp uh, crowdfunding. So essentially, what I will talk about is um, from the from the time it got accepted to the bootcamp until um, you know the what happened moving forward. So in in November 16, 2017, um, I got a good news that I got admitted to the bootcamp. However, uh, the the prob the challenge that I had then was, it's a good news, but where do I get the eight thousand US dollars I'm going to you know, uh, shell out for the uh, for the boot camp, including including the trek. So, um, I posted the, the the acceptance letter online and received a phenomenal um, um, you know uh, comments and likes from a lot of people. But then I had to plan concretely what to do, given that I, I only had like two weeks to pay for the down payment. So <clears throat> I had like um, three options. The first one was to probably liquidate my stocks in my employer. However, when I applied for um, liquidating my stocks at that time, it was not approved because the company said that getting accepted in into the boot camp was probably not a life-changing event that would equate to like death, marriage, buying a new house, etc. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then another one was that um, when I talked to my parents, um, they were planning. They were telling me maybe we can, they can, you know, um, apply for a loan just to pay for my boot camp tuition. However, um, I really discouraged my parents to do this because um, I do not want my participation in the boot camp to disrupt the way things are and the way we live in our finances. And I don't think that would be sensitive of me. So I think the last option for me then was to raise funds myself. Um, it was uncertain, but it was the only option left. However, aside from that, there are two other options that some people were telling me to do. Like the first one, um, I might probably seek help from my employer, but I was going to leave the company soon at that time. And no, so I'm not going to do that. And then the other one was that some people were asking me, maybe I, I can seek help from my university. But in undergrad, I was already a scholar and I thought that it was already probably too much to ask yeah okay so so uh it, when i was doing sort of my review of how i was going to fund this um uh, i a did not have as much time as you did to consider this since i got my acceptance late so many of you who have applied to the boot camp will probably be in that same situation um where you end up with a short fuse as far as from the time you get accepted to the time the camp actually starts so if you've applied already for the camp and you haven't been given your notice and you're through the steps of the review, um, you might want to start thinking about how to crowdfund as an option even well before you actually get accepted. You might not deploy it yet, but at least be thinking about different ways that you can fund the adventure and uh, be ready for that because the timing could be that fast before the time you get accepted and the time you actually have to show up. So um, start thinking about it now that you're actually in the application process. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I was also in the same situation that um, 
I applied the last on the last almost the last day of the submission. So, so I only had a limited time to really raise funds. <clears throat> okay. So um, when I, when I was browsing through the MIT website, I saw this part. This is screenshot. It says that fundraising is the entrepreneurship challenge. So it says that. Um, the boot camp does not start on the first day of the boot camp, but at the time you get admitted or probably before you are admitted and the way you raise funds. So I really took this seriously. Remember when, um, when I was talking to my parents and um, they were considering to, um, to apply for a loan, I was telling them, um, no, I, I saw this thing on the website saying that there is an entrepreneurship challenge. And... Um, I, I thought to myself, I had to prove something. I had to prove my worth of getting accepted to the boot camp. That for me, I think um, the accomplishment of this entrepreneurship challenge is a rite of passage, maybe, before I get into the boot camp. That is something that will validate my admission. I was telling my dad that um, maybe if, if, you know, if I cannot raise funds for the boot camp, maybe I might not be deserving at all. And that was my mindset. And, and things just started off from there. Yeah. What are your thoughts, Ben? Yeah, I completely agree with that. Um, if there's any way to test your passion for entrepreneurship ahead of the camp, which you will certainly absorb while you're in the camp, it's really about looking at getting to the camp as a challenge and an entrepreneurship journey that you have to take. And if you're not fully committed to being an entrepreneur and being a big impact in your community, then you're going to struggle through raising the funds in order to go. And I think you'll also struggle in the camp as well, because everyone that's there is on a journey and they're using the boot camp in order to accelerate that. So if you're not thinking about it as this as a measure, you're going to get surprised. So you need to really be thinking about it in that, in that manner. This is certainly a challenge that you should be striving to overcome quickly. So that way you can attend. Yeah. 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 And, and considering that I, I, I like had two weeks to raise the down payment of 3000 us dollars. You know, I was, I was telling my friends that maybe if, if I cannot raise $3,000 for the first two weeks, what would make me think that I could raise the rest of the 5,000 for the following weeks? So, you know, I had to take this, you know, this leap and uh, try to see where it went. Yeah, agree. Yeah. So uh, th those are uh, wh what I just said a few um, seconds ago. This is part of the challenge and I wanted to experience it. And um, my parents and I eventually agreed that, you know, I was too insistent on them. No, don't even dare to apply for a loan. <laughs> <laughs> I would say the same, right? You don't want to go into the camp in debt, right? With By doing yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, if it comes down to it and you are, over, you are really seriously overcommitted to the program, then obviously do what you got to do. But... Um, really challenge yourself to think about not going out to a bank and trying to absorb the costs or borrow the money or whatever. Like literally you should be treating this like a new business adventure, which is part of that journey and, and committing to not backing out versus thinking that if I can't raise the money in certain amount of weeks that I will back out, just be overly committed that you will get to the goal of the money and push forward. Like that's the only option. Uh, versus thinking if I can't get enough, then I'll back out because I think you'll end up in a situation where your energy won't get you close enough and you'll leave it in your head that, okay, well, I said two weeks ago that if I didn't get enough money, then I'll just back out. So it looks like I'm going to have to back out, right? Commit to the yeah. full amount and, and race towards that full amount as quickly as possible because there is no other option, right? Just kind of treat it that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I like your last comment there. I want to have a story to tell. And I think that goes into when you're crowdfunding, many people may not know your true passion 
for entrepreneurship and this journey that you're on. And so you should really be over-educating the people around you about why you want to do this. And it's not just so that you become a phenomenal entrepreneur. It's so that you can go and learn disciplined entrepreneurship and come back and be a really great impact to everyone around you, your businesses, your friends, your family, to really show them that there's a, there is an approach here that anyone could take when you put your, your energy and focus on it. So have a story to tell and be prepared to tell it over and over and over again, because most folks may not get it uh, the first time around. So, yep. Yeah, indeed. In retrospect, um, all the things from the first day I, uh, I got the, uh, the admission letter, um, this crowdfunding stories always has a special part in my boot camp story. I really learned a lot of things. And when I, when I share it to people, I always get the same reaction of awe at all the things that I discovered along the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Agree. So, um, on, on two days after the uh, admission letter, I launched the crowdfunding campaign. So, um, uh, it was liked and shared by friends, family, and even strangers. And um, pledges kept coming in the next days. And that for me was the litmus test of support. Um, if we like correlate it to the um, disciplined entrepreneurship, that was some sort of the PMR. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah right? true. Will my market serve me? <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. 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 And um, even though there were some pledges that until today weren't, you know, weren't fulfilled, but the fact that it took them, you know, the extra, the extra mile to tell me that they're going to you know, to give something was already enough for me. It was already an evidence of, of their support. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see on the screen right now, uh, the post I shared in November of 2019, that was when I set up my crowdfunding site. At that time, my, my priority really was just to have the site online. Um, it didn't, uh, I just wrote, wrote an essay there and um, explaining everything. I prepared all the uh, possible um, donation options like bank, PayPal, etc. And, you know, I was just playing it by ear and see how, you know, how people responded. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, when I was setting, I like, you know, I did send Ben, send Ben to MIT boot camp. I like what you have here. Bring, bring Enzo to Brisbane. You have yeah, to sort yeah. of, you sort of have to humanize the effort, right? And associate it back to the person that's seeking the funding. Like, just don't say I need money for MIT boot camps, right? Like, make it a part of who you are, and uh, and what you're trying to accomplish. So think about things like bring you to Brisbane, bring you to MIT, you know, accelerate your, your entrepreneurship journey for Enzo, right? Come up with something that really kind of captures the energy behind the effort. So that way, when people read it, it resonates quickly and it associates it back to you, which will then allow them to feel more comfortable with throwing whatever level of donation down uh, for you. Yeah, and actually, Ben, um, I was not really this social media guy before, before the uh, before this came up. Um, <laughs> yeah. Usually, usually when I have like you know when I have achievements whatsoever, um, I typically just like keep it to myself or to my friends, etc. But I think at this time I had to go out of my comfort zone because I knew then that. I needed, you know, I needed to step out of that in order for me to reach the goal that I wanted to reach. Yeah. And this is the, yeah. this is the piece of the program that pulls stuff out of you that you don't know you have until you're right in the middle of it. And even at the early stages, you saw that. And uh, I think beyond the program, I mean, this does a lot to you like that, where you don't realize some of the things that uh, come along with going to the boot camp, and this is certainly one of those areas where it's just like 
I, I didn't know I needed to be a social media maven, right? And here you are now, social media up your, your crowdfunding. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And another, um, another uh, roadblock there was that the famous crowdfunding website, the GoFundMe.com, wasn't available in the Philippines. Oh, no, so yeah. I, yeah, it wasn't available in the Philippines. So I had to look for um, a reasonable alternative so that's why you see there it's gogetfunding.com not as famous as the other one but at least it provided a platform for the online donors that's why for for those who are just in the philippines i was encouraging them to just donate by a bank instead of this um, yeah. platform yeah so um i was really taking it seriously and put it <laughs> and, you did there's no doubt about it yeah <laughs> <laughs> so um, I've, I've read that um, Facebook usually loves photos and infographics more than text. And I wanted things to be more visual and easier to understand, uh, uh, easier to be understood by people. So every night after work, I would make this infographics showing my, the progress of my crowdfunding. I was telling the people that you know, sorry if I'm disrupting your newsfeed, but I got to go to Brisbane and <laughs> <laughs> maybe you can sign up. <laughs> I love your line up there, but, but don't feel obliged, my friend. Let's just see if this works, right? I like, I'm kind of on the opposite side. I really went to a lot of people and I, I had three of my top advisors uh, look at me and say, I don't know if we're, we're sure about you doing this. And I looked at him and I said, you know what? I agree with you. I'm not sure either, but how much are you going to give me? Right? Like I sort of like, I, 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 there was no, no in my equation, right? It was like, you're going to do this and you're going to do it for me. Let's go. Let's make this happen. So, but I love the way you do that. Like, don't feel obliged, my friend. Let's just see if this works. You have to lower people's anxiety about this for you in order for them to, uh, to, 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 to drop in and fund a little bit of the campaign. So, but I love what, what you had done here. I certainly did not go to this kind of level, um, <laughs> but I think it's important to show the progress along the way. I certainly did use a bunch of emails following up through the process saying, oh my gosh, thank you. I, you know, we got this much closer and I did it mostly by text. I really wasn't thinking about it from a, from a visual standpoint, but a uh, great way to use visuals and use the algorithms that are in place to promote it more. Uh, in the social media tools. I think that's brilliant. Yeah, and um, well, on, on that part, you know, I was also thinking if um, I can like uh, reach out directly to people. I think I, I took on the, the other um, approach and the other side of the spectrum on that because, um, you know, in, with, with the friends that I have and given the, you know, the economic status of the Philippines, the context, um, I think I just thought that maybe it was not applicable in the context to put too much push on people giving me to it. Yeah. But then, yeah. yeah. So, and in terms of the visual representation, I think it was easier to see Brisbane if I put on a map, a map there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think it also, I think what you did here is, is really genius because it shows it's big. Right, you're not asking for an everyday crowdfund loan. You know what I mean? You're like, yeah, this yeah. is monumental. This is super important to you. This is something you may have been dreaming about. Like, and that really helps people see that they're just not loaning you 10 bucks so you can go down and grab a coffee, right? You're, you're really trying to be, a, be an impact, right? And I think that's really important. I think that's what you've been able to do here with some of the graphics. Yeah. So um, these are just a few more stuff that that I posted online, and then um, you see her. You see here the story that I shared. Someone gave. These are real stories by people. Like a friend gave up his concert budget to help, and then a former dormers um, shared some, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This added a more human aspect to to my campaign, and I think it really helped. Yeah, I, again, I didn't do any of this. Um, 
I think this is a great way to continue to build support. It's that, you know, the crowd coming in and letting the crowd sort of see that the crowd is moving in one direction and then everyone else just sort of wants to follow along. I think that's another great uh, tactic to take with the crowdfunding to really talk about how people are helping you to show that maybe someone will think, well, if everyone else is doing it, I should do it too. And that will help hopefully get you a, the funds that you're that you're looking for so i think that's really smart yeah I, you were you are so tactical with this man it's strategic it was it's amazing yeah 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 and um as you can see there in the bottom right um i even went as far as making spon sponsorship packages for corporations although i will tell you more about it later why it did not work. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I did take on two projects as part of my, <laughs> as part of my funding. There were a couple of companies that I knew some folks in and uh, I said, listen, you don't have to give me out of your personal pocket, uh, pay me through the company. I'll take on a couple of projects and I'll work them for you and uh, just use that, you know, fund my campaign as payment. And they were like, okay, we can do that. <laughs> so I, that, that's how I kind of got creative with the corporate, like reaching out to people I'd done business with in the past and said, this is what I'm up to. And, you know, if you're not willing to just give out of the kindness of your heart, I'm willing to sign up for whatever work you need me to do. And, uh, and I'll do that for you as, as a thank you. And, and, and I had some folks that did that. So, and, and some of them, they didn't give me thousands of dollars. They gave me, you know, a hundred bucks and it would, it ended up being a project that was more than a hundred bucks, right? And I'm okay with that, right? So I just yeah. wanted to make sure I, I was pushing towards the goal and getting the funds that I needed. So, yeah. 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 Okay. So these are just other of the infographics that I posted. Um, I usually got questions all the time, repetitive questions. What is this that you're getting into? So just to set things straight and I can always refer them to something for me not to repeat over and over again. It was not easy to explain, I tell you. That's why yeah. That's why I came up with this. <laughs> yeah, I, I had plenty of people that said, why are you going to Australia to attend a school, at a school thing that's literally 40 minutes from you? And I was like, <laughs> don't worry about that. Just go ahead and tell me how much you're gonna help me out with, right? Like, don't worry about that. But yeah, they were asking me like, MIT is like 40 minutes away from you. Why are you going all the way to Australia to attend an MIT thing? I'm like, just stop, just, just come on, help me out. Yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah, yeah. And aside from that, I also um, extracted from the MIT website some people who would add more credibility to the campaign. So I picked up the, um, the profiles of Bill and Jocko. Yeah. And especially the, the ones who are listed in Forbes 30 under 30, and just to give some gravi gravitas in, on, on the campaign. Yeah, that's really smart. Yeah, so, you know, guilty by association, right? I think that's a, that's a really great move. Yeah, great yeah. move. <laughs> yeah. So here comes the turning point. Um, at around a few days, like four or five days before the deadline, um, one a friend of mine called me up and saying that um, one of her acquaintances just pledged to donate um, three thousand U.S. dollars. So what my friend, what my friend did was that she copied. You know, I had this essay in the crowdfunding website. She just copied it and pasted it on her email to her acquaintance, whom she knew was very generous. And then, like after two hours, there was a reply which said just one liner i'm good with three thousand us dollars and that wow. was oh my god that's god. awesome that's it's awesome amazing. yeah i had someone <laughs> i had someone come in at that level and uh i got super excited uh because you know that's a big step and they got c completely committed to it they still haven't they still haven't funded that dollar amount. <laughs> so, you know, like it can be awesome, but at the same time, don't let that stop your push. Keep True. going True. until you get to the goal. Don't think you're in the clear because someone made a, a generous offer because you may yeah. be in a position where someone speaks before they act. And unfortunately yeah, you could be in a position. So I kept pushing right through. That's why I mentioned that earlier about 
really having a goal of the whole and being committed to getting the whole versus committing to a portion and then backing out. Like I didn't let that detract me from what I was trying to accomplish. And I kept pushing and, uh, and still met the goal because I didn't let that, you know, throw me off course. So, so be careful with that when you have these generous offers uh, cause it could destroy your psyche around, Oh, I'm almost there. And next thing you know, the person doesn't fund it. And now you're still scurrying to try to make things happen. So. Yeah, I quite resonate with that because um, uh, the, the pledge was made on Thursday and um, the deadline I think was like Tuesday or Wednesday the following week. And it wasn't really easy for me to tell someone, hey, I need your $3,000. <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for, some, for someone you, don't, you haven't met yet. But yeah. I had... I had to do that. I had to, I had to constantly communicate with his executive assistant, just to make sure that that the money gets into the bank yeah. as soon as possible. Yeah. yeah. Because I, I don't want to pay for, for um for the reservation fee, without you know having the actual cash in hand, and um, I I even had I I even had a friend who who was telling me, um, you know, if you don't have the cash now, I can pay through credit card and all that stuff. My friend was doing that pledge, but I told him, no, don't do that. Um, I'll have to have the money on hand before I do anything. Yeah, yeah. You are, <laughs> you are so selling at that point, right? Like, here's the contract. I need the check. Let's go. Come on. I got to get this deposited. Yeah. It can be tricky, but um, your commitment to the program and what you're do will do will help you push through that like as as tough as that kind of a conversation will be uh have it because ultimately it could impact your ability to get to the camp so don't be afraid of it and this is this goes back into what you said at the very beginning it's all about pure entrepreneurship and pushing through your passion to someone who's not convinced about what you're up to um and and just being like let's go let's go let's go uh, will help them see that you are really committed to it and we'll start to jump on board with you and hopefully give you that check in a timely manner. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. And But then that turning point, although it was really like exhilarating for me, the next part of, this, of it was more daunting. You know, I already accomplished the 3,000 US dollars. Hey, wait, I still have 5,000 yeah, dollars. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> And that's what yeah. a big, big, a big donation like that can throw you off like that. Like, oh, this is smooth sailing now. You have yeah, to yeah. have to stay focused towards the goal uh, when you get a big, a big contributor like this because it can throw you off. Like, oh, I'm smooth. I got no problems now. And then maybe they don't respond and fund, and you're getting closer to the deadline, and your nerves kick in, and next thing you know, you're making a decision um to back out when you really shouldn't have so be cautious of big donations so it doesn't take you off of where you were and you reaching your goal because sometimes folks may you know speak before they act and uh yeah, yeah. yeah so let's just yeah let's just slip over to the next one and we'll, we'll, we'll keep going okay so um that's it i had to you know i had to make sure that it gets deposited in my account soon and um and the, again there the, the greater challenge was to raise the remaining five thousand us dollars yeah. Yeah. so um, there so on november 28th i reserved my slot and uh, showed it to the people and um and that was still a continuing challenge to, to raise the rest. Yeah, I was really excited at that point. Like, we're at the first checkoff point, right? I sort of talked to everyone, like my community. We're at the first checkoff point. We've made it. And uh, I'm really excited that we're all on this journey, right? Those are some of the messages that I was sending out. Like, you're with me now on this adventure and but we're not done yet and we still have a little bit more to go um so continue to share this continue to talk about it and uh and continue to help so yeah. 
Yeah, that's that's true, Ben. You know, when when we do things like this, it is very important to um, let the, the people feel like they're part of a community, that they're now part of. You you are fighting this, you know, this fight together, and it's not anymore just your own campaign, right? Yeah, very true. Very true. So. Um, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. at this point, I needed to prove everyone that I will not fail them. <laughs> it gets real, real when you do that. Like, okay, I'm committed now. Like, I have to not get to the boot camp. I just have to get through this funding campaign because I've really made a big commitment here. Yeah, yeah. I got to prove everyone that I will not fail this at all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Th right. that's I re true. I remember that. Yeah. Yes, Ben, you were saying something? I said, I, I just remember that, like, you know, you get to the first checkoff point, you put the the initial payment down, it's like, okay, hey, I have a whole bunch more to go, and holy Toledo, now I have to make sure that I don't fail this completely. Uh, so the pressure actually went up, you know, so, yeah. Yeah, and, and even from, uh, you know, from a personal standpoint, um, at this point, um, returning the money to people was would be really, really um, inconvenient for me. Just in case I don't raise the fund, yeah. even even the uh, the donor of the three thousand US dollars, um, my friend told me that the guy sent her um, um, a private message asking, like, what if he doesn't make it? And of course, my friend told him, even without consulting me, which was fine, that of course he will return the money. But that would be a logistical nightmare because if, if, I, like, if, I, if I will have to return the money to everyone, especially those who donated via the crowdfunding website online, I will have even to shoulder the, you know, the bank charges, the PayPal charges, and that would really be inconvenient for me. So I really, really had to fight for this, yeah. you know, from all aspects. Yeah, that is a, it is an unseen portion of this that plays with you as you go through the effort that if I don't make it, how do I get the money back? Like, I don't have yeah, everyone's mailing addresses. Do I send them a check? You know, do I PayPal them back? Like, you know, then the whole associated with the bank fees that go along with it. I was like, I don't even want to go near that. I have to get this done because I don't want to have to return any of the funds. Uh, so yeah, there's an aspect of that that comes in when you, when when you get close. Yeah, and you're yeah. 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 So now the next challenge was sustaining the campaign. So for me to sustain the campaign, I had to. Um, always post constant updates on fundraising progress and they had to make sure that there was full transparency on my motivations and plans and um, I ran the fundraising campaign like a marketing campaign full of infographics targeting and in this at this um, for this particular case through social media yeah I mean even during the camp I was over social media i was oversharing uh, because a lot of my contributors did come through facebook and so i used that as a vehicle to literally bring them along with me to the camp so that they could yeah. see almost everything that i was going through and everything that i was learning and all the challenges that i was discovering like even bef even after i got funded and, and moved through i still kept on the updates because again, I wanted them to feel like this was as much their adventure as it was mine. And I think you have to be thinking about your campaign in that respect, even after you're done with the campaign and you're at the camp. So. Yeah, that's true. It, it was more of like having a, we're all in this together mindset. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I really, you know, you know, I mentioned it earlier about what I, what I think the camp you know, a good portion of the campus to bring back what you learned and share it with everyone else. Cause not everyone will jump on this kind of a journey 
and put themselves yeah. through the stressors of a 120 plus hour work week. Um, <laughs> and, you know, bringing back what I learned uh, was definitely in my plan. But again, I wanted to make sure that they got every bit of the opportunity to see what I was going through to make it more real. So that way, when I did come back and share my excitement for what I learned and what I might be able to use in my community, um, they would have a clear understanding of where it came from. And I think that really helps people feel like the investment in you is well worth it beyond just getting you to the camp, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so this one, uh, this particular one was um, on November 30. Um, this was more of a, uh, an approach to, approach to transparency. Um, in the first few weeks, I was sharing things more about the boot camp, what it is, who are the pe people there, etc. But this is the first time that I shared my personal motivations. I was like thinking about it and uh, this was in response to people asking, why, you know, why are you pushing this? And sometimes I get to the point where um, maybe the boot camp program itself may not be, you know, may not be enough. So I had to reevaluate myself and I somehow exposed my personal motivations online. So um, I'd like to um, share some of you here, some of it with you here. So the first one was that I said that it's because of privilege, which I don't have. I know that I don't know enough. That's why I wanted to learn. Um, it's probably a strike of luck. And of course, it's MIT. And I represent others' aspirations. At that point, um, I got a lot of messages. And um, sharing with you here, one of them um, on the right side, that was a message I, I, um, I woke up the next morning to. And, um, and because of that post of mine, I got more pledges, which was, you know, was really unprecedented at that, at that time. I was just, you know, being very candid about it. And um, I, I was quite glad that it resonated with other people as well. Yeah. Yeah, this is certainly something that I ran into as well. Um, you know, having, I had, I had some of my closest friends tell me I was crazy. And I mean, I'm a, I'm a little crazy in general, but um, some of them are just, they, they just couldn't comprehend why I was trying to do this. Even though over all the years that I've known them, you know, they got an idea of sort of what I was, you know, trying to achieve in life. And I had to re-explain to people the personal reasons, you know, which got down to doing something that I love, um, you know, solving problems, being a contributor in my community, um, doing well for my children, right? Unlike you, you don't have kids, I have kids. And, you know, some of those fatherly things kicked in. And I had to explain to them that, you know, this is a part of that learning, that lifelong learning adventure that everyone should be on. And I had to explain down to very personal reasons why I needed to get in, and why they should support me. And so um, I think that vulnerability does help because it does show that you don't have all the answers, but you know what you're trying to get to and you're not gonna let anything get in the way of you getting to it. So I think you have to kind of be, be vulnerable. Yeah, you know, that's true. And um, that I guess also provides a more personal connection between you and the people who are, you know, thinking about supporting you. Yep. Um, it's not just about, it's not just about the reward that the MIT education can give you, but also more about um, the common human motivations that probably each one of us has, but only a few ones could, you know, could actually turn these things into reality and yeah. you become like the personification of what they want to, you know, to do as well. Yeah. Which is, yeah. You know, and that goes into, yeah, that goes life. into the program, right? And you being a catalyst in your community once you're back. And yeah, yeah, yeah. You, True. your story, you're building a story, you're building an experience that you'll be able to use for years. You know, when you talk about the journey that you've been on in your life and this is great. This is great in those in that respect where you can talk 
from clear experience and be an inspiration to others that are that are coming up around you that they can see that someone like you who doesn't who may am i lucky uh, you know who's not privileged right can actually get this opportunity and and achieve it and and go and experience it and then come back and be and, and be helpful to to everyone around you so i think that goes right into that yeah yeah, yeah. so um the next thing they did was um to take things to another level um at the beginning, I was sharing everything through my personal Facebook page, but then I thought that you know, for looking from from the perspective of someone who browses his or her newsfeed, maybe I might get annoying already. And uh, <laughs> I was thinking of that really, you know. Yeah. And um, and that's the reason why I opened. I created a Facebook page. It was named Bring Enzo to the MIT Innovation and Entrepreneurship Bootcamp before. I renamed it after I closed the crowdfunding to just a personal blog. But then um, I, I explicitly um, mentioned there in that page that, you know, probably if you don't want to follow my campaign, you can freely unlike this page or you can like this page if you want to follow it. And um, I think that it was also useful yeah. like, to centralize everything. Yeah, so I, kinda, I, was, I had some folks that did that. They were kind of yeah. like, dude, you're sending <laughs> way too many updates. And I'm like, come over here. Let me see, how much did you contribute? You know, like <laughs> I like use that as an excuse to re-engage, right? Cause you know, your excitement and your commitment to it is gonna, it's gonna, end, you're gonna end up sending a lot of these updates out and some people don't get it and they'll, potentially block you right and you, yeah, know, yeah. you certainly don't want to lose relationships and you know from this but at yeah. the same time you don't want to be you know there's that feeling in the crowdfunding where you can be a burden to people because you're so excited and they they may take it the wrong way uh so yeah, it's, yeah. It, it's you know i tried to warn people ahead of time that i would be coming at them and if they didn't contribute and i was sending direct you know direct asks I would come back around and people who were sort of like, you're sending too much. I'd be like, well, let's talk about that. <laughs> like, if, you, if you fully funded me, then I'll take you off. But if you haven't, then, uh, maybe you should contribute a little bit more. So I tried to use those as excuses to engage and, and also provide a little bit of more insight into why, into my why. And, um, and that way, in case they shared it, they, they could relay that information to other people. So, yeah. Yeah. So these are just a few examples of uh, the things that I kept them posted with. And one thing that I did around December was to change the layout of the, of the tracking infographic. Um, I was thinking that probably, you know, people would just eventually think that the post I'm posting today would probably be the same post I posted last week because it had the same layout. Yeah. So, so I eventually thought of changing the layout of it, you know, just, just doing some marketing stuff in there. Yeah. Yeah. This again, I mean, you put so much into this crazy. It's, <laughs> yeah. And this is the one I mentioned to you earlier. Um, I launched sponsorship packages. I sent letters to companies, but I wasn't able to get corporate sponsors. I think the timing was, wasn't just right. Um, it was December, and the uh, and the common um, the common reason that I get is that um, it's the end of the year, so the budgets are already either used up or already allocated to Christmas events, or probably um, it's not um, a marketing priority for them, stuff like that. So initially, I sent letters to um, to foundations which um, in retrospect, I thought probably wasn't the right, um, the right, the right uh, people to go to because they had other priorities, like probably, you know, universal education and stuff like that. Yeah. So, and, and that proved right. So the second option that I considered was, what if I go to very specific, like maybe I can go to airlines or travel agencies and then that actually proved better 
because the deal that I was trying to strike with them was that, okay, um, you, you might want to sponsor my airfare and that would equate to a sponsorship that I will, you know, I will give services to, et cetera, when I come back. And it actually reached a point that one travel agency um, brought up my, uh, my letter to the budget deliberation because the marketing team um, considered that the, it could be a good opportunity for them. However, the, the only problem in there was that at that time, um, they ha were having marketing budget cuts and the social media manager was sort of not so sure about me because at that time, I only had Facebook. They were looking for my Instagram account. They were looking for my Twitter account and that's nowhere to be found. So, so I think that was also in retrospect something that I lacked. But then what I told the marketing director who happened to be my friend was that, well, I'm not planning to be a travel blogger soon. So I'm accepting this fate. Yeah, yeah I didn't have, I didn't use a, a corporate tactic. I only reached out to the folks that I know that may have projects that, you know, would feel more comfortable with doing it at that level for, on a project versus just a donation. Um, but it's interesting. I like, I like how you approached it where you went after the airlines for the airfare. Um, I think that that's really smart. Um, and that's certainly not anything that I had considered when I was doing my, my campaign. Yeah, you know, one of my close friends actually asked me, you know, and so are you sure about what you're doing? Um, who are you to be sponsored by corporations? Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, I, I, was, I was telling him that I'm not losing anything if I do this. And, you know, if I do this and get some funding, then I actually gain something out of it. Yeah. So it was, you know, I don't want to regret one day that, you know, if, if I don't get to reach my target, I will always think of that possibility. What if I did this and that, you know, yeah. I just wanted to try everything. Yeah. I, I think that's the attitude you have to have, whatever it takes. It's, it's not going to hurt. You know, you're either going to get a yes or you're going to get a no one or the other. Yeah. And, yeah, uh, yeah. and just, and just treat it that way, but obviously be kind during it. Don't go in all mean, like, Oh, you don't want to support me. You're, you're a terrible per people, right? Don't, no, thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for considering it. And I can't wait to come back and tell you all about it, even though they didn't support you. Right? Yeah. 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 That's true. Yeah. And, um, you, you see here, I even made a poster out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you post the poster? Did you post it like on campuses and stuff or? No, no, it's only, on, it's only online. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, you're posting up things on telephone poles. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Didn't go that far. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Then Corporate yeah, is interesting. Yeah, you were saying something. Yeah, that's just it's an interesting tactic. I I never thought about it at like like that. Like you you really did go all in here. Yeah. Because you know I was really anxious at the at the possibility that what if I cannot reach the target? You know, so yeah. <laughs> and at that point around December seven, the the day I posted I posted it, the rate wasn't as fast as it was a few weeks ago probably because people know that the deadline is still a month from that point. Yeah. So there was not much a sense of urgency. Yeah, that happened to my campaign as well. It came in and early it was just, they were just flowing in and then it trickled to a lull. And I was like, oh no, no. <laughs> you know, oh no. Like, what do I, I gotta get out there, right? And that, you know, kind of started initiating a lot of the, the you know, the, the in the middle of the campaign actions, but um, it's going to happen. So when you're in the middle of your campaign and you start to feel the ticks go down, that should be your indicator to start pushing into, uh, pushing into action and start doing more action than not. Um, because it, it can't, that can really mess with your head big time. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So another aspect that, um, I made sure that I was into was that I shared stories to add authenticity and credibility. So as I showed earlier, 
I, sh I shared stories about past boot campers. I made sure that I kept them posted in, in the developments in my journey, like for example, even the visa approval. And I also posted inspiring stories from donors. Yeah, yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't use any of the, any of the, the boot camp. what was happening in it. It's probably because it came on so fast for me that I was so focused on just, hey, this is what I'm up to and you should help that I really didn't even think about trying to incorporate some of the successes and how people have used the experience uh, to be a catalyst in their community. And uh, that, that, but that's again, when I say you, you went, you went all in, you really, really did. This is a great way to show that others who are just like you are able to achieve the same thing. And, um, and so I think that's, that's really, really important. That's a great way to continue to build that ownership around it and, and to get you the funding that you're looking for. Uh, that's really yeah. smart. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I chose a few people um, who I thought were like similar to to my profile. And um, also, this one is very um, relevant here in the Philippines, the one in the left side, the Baby Shark. Do you know about that song, Ben? Baby Shark song? No. I don't know. Tell me. Okay, so um, the Baby Shark song, you, you might want to look it up later on YouTube. But it became a phenomenon here in the Philippines. Like children were dancing baby shark, even in parties, etc. And um, as I was doing research about the MIT boot camp, I found out what? that the owner of the company who produced the baby shark song was an MIT boot camp alumnus. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um and when I saw that, I saw it as an opportunity. Hey, this can connect to the people. And, um, and that's why I shared this um, on my page. And people eventually asked, were asking me, hey, Enzo, what song are you going to make after the boot camp? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're so right. I mean, and this again goes into some of what I've been saying about, you know, getting to the program meeting some phenomenal people, really creating some amazing experiences and, and all charging towards being really impactful in your community that some, someone from the camp can create a baby shark uh, and a song that goes along with the dance. And that could be me. I could be building the next viral something that, you know, catapults my city, my, my state, my country uh, to the forefront, you know, because it's something that I was able to draw out of the camp and, uh, you know, and with the people that I, that I was with for that week. And, and I think that's really, really important. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, and then moving forward, these are just some of the other stories that I shared, like someone donating um, anonymously and then my office mates um, pulling up money for me no, and then um, on the other hand, aside from uh, sharing the stories, I also, um, you know, to be, I was transparent as well, um, especially to people who ask. Um, I engaged in paid ad advertising too. Um, I saw it as an opportunity cost, and I just had a limit of, I'm not going to spend more than a hundred dollars for this. So um, in total, I spent around sixty-five U.S. dollars. And um, this was the time when I got some sort of full blown into the social media marketing thing. I saw the dashboards that social media marketers were, were, were handling, like the targeting. I, I experimented on, on this option. I initially tried out doing targeting to people according to interest. Like I was, I was writing interests like sustainability, um, charity, scholarship, education, MIT, et cetera. Those were like 10 keywords. And then I, I was seeing that the, the, my posts were getting a lot of reach, but not of the quality that I wanted it to be. Like the people who may have the propensity to donate to my fund. So um, in the middle of it, I changed the target to this option called friends of people, friends and friends of friends of people who like this page. 
and then eventually the reach that I was getting was more you know relevant to my campaign so for those people who, who would like to try doing this thing I would recommend that they they target the friends and friends of friends of people who like this page at the end of the day it's very logical that people who may have the propensity to donate to your fund would probably have some sort of connection with you probably a second degree connection a third degree connection but at least they have some affinity with you right yeah i think that's a natural occurrence right where the people who are closest to you your first layer of network right and um this is why it's so important to attach them to the story to make them feel like they're a part of this group that's supporting you because they're going to most likely talk about it in their circles and if they're as committed to it as you are there's a really good chance that the people that they in their first level network uh, will contribute to you so that's why it's so important to really know what to say to folks and let them see your passion and energy for this and uh, so that way they can share it and share it so that way it continues to contribute to your to your campaign yeah, yeah and and actually it's quite surprising when when i'm in events people who who i haven't spoken to a lot way back in college etc would would come to me and tell me hey i've been following your campaign and even though they're not adding any any contribution to the fund that in itself was um, was a validation that I think I'm doing something right in there. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, so this is just the example of um, you know the insights that I get from the uh, from the Facebook page. So um, the organic ones, as you can see, this is the one that aren't paid, and then the dark orange are are the reach that I get um, by adding a few more um, pesos into it, into it. Good thing Facebook gives you initial free trial. So I had like um, around, um, around um, uh, $20 of free trial of this um, boost. They call it a boost. I tried it on the trial and then I saw that it was doing something good. So I, I used it uh, in some significant posts. And in this, um, this is towards the end of my story. So this was um, January 11. I have reached around 86% eight, of my funding target. Um, I, I think I forgot to tell you that the funding target that I indicated in my campaign was 10,000 US dollars. That was cognizant of the, uh, you know, the human mentality that if you put in a certain amount, um, it's common that you wouldn't reach 100% target. And that would provide some buffer. Yeah. So um, at the end of the day, um, achieving 86% gross um, gro uh, in the gross target it already equated to the total tuition fees. So oh, that's great. That's it. And um, I also made sure that I, I showed the people that I've already had enough and I'm not too greedy to extend yeah. to. Yeah. That's why it was really important for me to, to tell the people that I'm signing off the campaign on January 15. And um, I was also very um, honest with them that um, I'm shelling out lots of, you know, I'm shelling out from my personal funds as well. I was uh, in my posts, I was telling them that um, after this, um, I'm, I'm shelling out for the other expenses, the airfare and the accommodation, just to also let them feel that this is um, a communal effort. And uh, I'm not, I was not only relying on them, on their, good, on their goodness for all of this. Yeah, I think it's, I, I was watching it really, really close. Um, I did not put in over. I put in what I needed. And as soon as I hit that mark, I shut it down because I didn't want a dollar more than what I asked for. Cause I didn't want anyone to think that I was trying to take advantage of them. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. And, and so I watched it really closely as I got to the end and I actually, I used the GoFundMe campaign uh, tool and I had to, uh, annotate the last bit of donations that came in and 
I shut it down at that exact same time. And it actually ended up causing a little bit of confusion in my donor pool. Um, mm -hmm. When I shut it down, there were folks that had said they were going to contribute. And when I shut down the campaign, they, when I followed back up with them to, to um, you know, for the donation, they were like, oh, I saw your campaign shut down. So I thought you were fully funded. So I, I wasn't thinking I would still need to give you any of the donation. <laughs> I was like, no, actually, you were part of that. So I still need your help. It did cause a little bit of confusion, but I was very anxious about shutting it down. Uh, and I didn't want to collect a, a, a single penny over the amount because I didn't want anyone yeah, to think that yeah. I was trying to take advantage of them. So, but yeah. Yeah, I think there has to be an element of good faith in it that yeah. you don't want any more, you know, any additional is appreciated, but at least from your own initiative, um, you yeah. already acknowledge that you've had a lot and you've had enough already. Agree. Yeah, agree. So um, I come to the synthesis of, um, of this and the things I learned. So in this campaign, um, uh, I think it's okay to maximize the use of social media if you find it as a suitable medium. I always tell people who do crowdfunding that there might be other um, ways to raise funds. Like if you have a scholarship, if, if, if someone wants to sponsor you the full amount, then by all means you can, you know, that's the easy way around. But um, you can also take the option of the social media. But aside from that, you should know where your social media strength is. Like for me, it was Facebook. I tried posting stuff on LinkedIn, but didn't really like gather enough um, traction in there. And then um, put yourself in the position of someone scrolling the newsfeed. I was telling you that a while ago that probably you might be irritating other people if, if there's too much yeah. and then like um, photos and infographics are more appreciated by Facebook or by social media than text and um, connect to the people through stories to give it authenticity and um, the last one in that aspect is that at the end of the day even if you have a strong social media campaign your strong your personal network should be strong enough and it's still necessary um, do not um, do not think that it will be like all strangers coming in together. There will still be an element of the network that should still be there. Yeah, I think um, if you're if you're not using social media, if the social media wasn't around, uh, you would literally be out traveling out in your community, knocking on doors of the people that you know. And I think you have to pick one. Yeah, or multiples and try them out uh, because one is not probably going to serve your entire need. So you need yeah. to be really, really creative and, and don't be afraid to go knock on someone's door, right? Yeah. yeah. And then another one is be clear on your targets and alternatives. So um, to help people get a sense of reality and how they can be part of the campaign, um, I was very clear um, in my campaign, what my targets were, and I was guiding them through. Um, I was not leaving any question unanswered, and I was giving people the impression that they are not in a way just giving dole outs for me. Yeah. It was some sort of um, chipping in as part of, of this campaign. We're all in this together. And I was actually very careful about using the word donation. Yeah. The word of choice that I, uh, I, I used was chip in or share because um, I don't want it to have a, a connotation that, you know, when people donate, usually they don't care afterwards what happens after. Yeah. So I want them to be part of this mission. <clears throat> yeah. Good, good note. Definitely. Uh, I know I've said it a couple of times since I've, we've been doing the podcast and you're absolutely right. Know what you're looking for. Don't set a low target. You know exactly what it's going to take to get there and be prepared to have an all, a plan B, right? Um, because it's going to take that kind of execution uh, in order to get you there. Yeah. Yeah. Then, like number, number three yeah. is so, so incredibly important. You, yeah. are, you are a product. 
you are selling yourself. Uh, you need to be prepared to close people down on you uh, in order to get your dreams achieved. So you outside of the boot camp should always be looking at yourself like a product and uh, make sure that you know enough about what you're trying to do so that you can handle anyone that doesn't get what the product is all about, right? How to sell yeah. yourself. Yeah. 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 I was, I was thinking that, you know, you are the best person who knows yourself. So if you are, if, you know, if we are saying that we cannot sell, sell the idea of ourselves, what makes us think that we can sell other things? That was my mindset in that time. Yeah, I agree. You have to, <clears throat> you have to have this in. If you can't sell yourself, you can't sell your ideas. If you can't sell your ideas, you can't get your company project, whatever off the ground. You really have to be looking at yourself as, as like a product and know exactly what your value propositions are because that's going to yeah. make it easier for other people to, to see, feel, and hear that. And it just makes it easier for them to be on board with whatever you're going to do. So, yeah, yeah, true, you know. true. And then number four, um, well, this is more on the logistical side. <clears throat> make it easy for people to contribute. So give them all the possible options they can. So I, uh, at least I open PayPal and Bank for me, for my for me for my campaign, and make sure that all of these are ready before launching the campaign. You know, people are already getting the extra, doing the extra mile to send you something. Don't make it hard for them. Yeah. Less hassle, the better. Yeah, completely <laughs> agree with that. Have everything ready to go. Don't make it hard. And if you make it hard, you're just putting barriers into people being a supporter. So knock them out, knock them out in ahead of time. Yeah. And finally, I think, and the most important is inspire the community and be grateful. The first part, inspire the community that calls, that is an, a call to action and make sure to acknowledge the, you know, the people behind you and acknowledge the fact that without the, the generosity of the people behind you, you won't be even there. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I can't agree any more with that. That is so true. If you don't understand the concept of community and giving back more, you'll learn that through the boot camp. And if you don't understand the concept of gratefulness, you will learn that as well <laughs> through the boot camp. Um, <laughs> And, and everything that you're doing here in order to get to the boot camp is really all about returning uh, with that graciousness and learning and being a contributor for everyone around you. Um, I think that's the biggest payback you can give to the people who have stepped up and provided some support to you to get to this. And if you don't do that, uh, then you really didn't learn anything. And, uh, and we all know as graduates from the boot camp that that's that's you know primary number one is to be out there and serve your community and the people around you well and to be grateful that you're you get that opportunity to do it every day. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with that, Dan. Yeah. 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 So and this is an, some sort of an epilogue for for my presentation. More than the cash, it's the connections built and rekindled. So the the photos you see are some of the catch ups that I made. With, a, uh, with some of the people who contributed to my fund. So some of them I hardly talked to before. Um, some of them, them I didn't knew before. So, um, and uh, you see that card, that's a, that's a thank you card I was giving the people who, who donated to my fund. And um, I had to highlight that, of course, it's generosity that brought me to, to Brisbane and it, gratitude is highly in order. And I always had to emphasize that there is a need to pay, pay it forward. So I was telling them, uh, I was telling the people my plans um, as I go along. Like for example, um, uh, maybe around this May, I'm going back to my province to, to hold innovation and entrepreneurship sessions to senior high school students, um, you know, free of charge, just to also let people know that what they invested on me is being put into good use. Hundred, hundred thousand percent. Um, I still owe a lot of people hugs. I haven't gotten to everyone <laughs> yet. Um, yeah, me too. <laughs> and it's been a year. So it goes to show you the, the, the amount of people and 
I mean, they were all over the place. I, I've always said that uh, when I get the opportunity, we'll definitely hug it out, but uh, be thankful. You know, these people believed in you, will continue to believe in you. It will certainly rekindle relationships that you haven't had in a while. And, um, you know, these are some of the side benefits that you get out of the campaign and the boot camp. And, you know, uh, what an awesome thing to hear that you're going to be going back into your high school um, and talking to them about entrepreneurship and innovation. And that's really what the world is all about. It's what the world needs more of is people who are excited about being thought provoking and challenging and getting out there and doing really important things for everyone around them. And it's really cool to hear that you've, you, you're doing that. Yeah. Yeah. So there, I think, um, that's it for me. Um, any, any additional, um, uh, thoughts then before we you know, turn it over to Andrew? No, I think uh, be a believer in it, right? Um, don't let anything that you feel like that's blocking you stop you. Um, you know, have, have meaningful goals. Don't take advantage of people. Uh, be thankful, be informative, and uh, share your story, right? And let people know that this is important to you and and there's more reason than just attending the camp as to why you want to do it. And I think that will lead you uh, to a successful crowd campaign. Yeah, yeah. And always think of this as part of an exciting, you know, process of getting to the boot camp and essentially some sort of part of the boot camp even, right? Agree. I completely agree. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, everybody. Okay.